Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Jason Anderson. I'm the director of programming here at the Kingston Canadian Film Festival. And I'm very, very thrilled to be joined by uh, two guests for this uh, Q&A session. Uh, we have Tyrone Tommy, who is the director and co-writer of Learn to Swim. And he's here with one of the film stars, Emma Ferreira. So thanks so much to both of you for making time for us today. Yeah, thanks for having us. And great. So if you've just viewed the film and are joining us, welcome. We hope you enjoyed the film. If not, be sure to check out the, our digital platform at the KCFF to get a ticket. And uh, and yeah, we're just really thrilled. I mean, this is a, I think, uh, a film that's been certainly one of the most exciting uh, first features uh, in Canada in the last while. And, and I think just such a such a damn cool movie, too. So thanks, Tyrone for making a movie that feels really really cool <laughs> so it's not and that is not a common thing for canadian features to actually have like that quality <laughs> lots of great movies but like you know like like blue note album cover cool that's a relatively rare uh, i love rare that thing. you i love that you went to that because that was a huge uh inspiration as far as like um the approach to shooting it was like a lot of like the blue note jazz covers from the from the 50s there and that's it. Like, and that like, visually, it is so sumptuous. I mean, that's, and I think that, like, you know, I think that's that's something we, you know, you, you're kind of playing with that kind of like, like, you know, like it's, it, the 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 jazz had that kind of visual vocabulary which we associate with it, which is a big part of this experience. You know, certainly it's kind of like, you know, you can see how it's sort of functioning in tandem with with the music, which you know is, is also quite important. But yeah, I mean, was there always like that? I mean, was the look of the film something you always had kind of a pretty firm idea about? It did it, did it evolve over time? Yeah, uh, myself and and Nick Kate, our cinematographer, um, you know, we had worked together on a few projects before, so. You know, coming into this film, we were just looking to challenge ourselves and to push ourselves like artistically to do our best work. And so it, once we came to this decision that we really wanted, you know, it was a film that was based and lives in a lot of music and that we were going to, the visual reference was going to be jazz cover albums and that we were going to take that approach. Um, it was just really about constantly ch challenging each other and making sure that we were staying in that that field as we're going through the film, you know, so there's sometimes where things felt um, crazy, they felt uncomfortable, um, but you just lean into it, you know, because you know that you're, it's coming from a good place. Well, and that's it. And there's so much about the film that kind of, it really is, you know, musical in all these different ways, I think. And certainly it's it's something you feel right for the get-go when you actually sort of go straight into uh, kind of this really amazing, you know, musical sequences that sort of bracket the film. Um, um, and yeah, like was I mean, was that I mean, what? What were some of the challenges when kind of going into sort of trying, knowing that you were going to be doing a film that that really has you know kind of an unconventional structure, an unconventional feel because it really is like it's it's jazz. <laughs> the movie is yeah. jazz. That's that's not an easy thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was always um, sort of two uh, uh, stories going at simultaneously at the same time. I think in the original version of the story, um, we didn't get to meet Selma. Um, as much and and after a while of writing we we realized that you know in, in order for you to really understand Desi's grief you really do have to meet Selma and then once we um once we did that once we opened up the world to Selma it sort of created this whole new um sort of double time period that exists in the film um but creating the music beforehand was was pretty intense you know we we create we wrote all the music that the actors perform um prior to shooting so it was something that like had to get into their bones and learn. Um, of course, luckily Emma over here is a very talented singer herself, so um, didn't have to fake it too much in that in that realm. <laughs> she, you know, when you hear her singing in the film, it, that's her. You know, and mm -hmm. it's something I'm really really proud of that we're able to capture. Thank you. <laughs> and also helped to write one of the songs. You know, it became really like, such a holistic process. Yeah, the opening the opening song was yeah. uh, it was awesome. It was really cool. It was. Uh, process of me kind of recording my own stuff to get into character and setting tie just things that I was doing and then we figured out that the opening would be really cool to have a kind of more spoken wordy type piece for the for the jazz club so that was really awesome yeah I mean it's great I mean I just I mean question for Emma just I mean, what was it like to kind of have that chance to to really tap all these different you know kind of sides of your artistry I mean certainly I mean such a great performance but also just to be the, the all that musical element in Europe I am able to explore here too yeah, I mean, it was amazing. Um, it was, it came out of nowhere and, and it was awesome because Selma is so much, like there's so much of me in her, but I learned so much through being her as well. And I was able to kind of um, incorporate 
so much of my artistry, like you said, into her. And um, I've been writing for a really long time. And so taking that kind of aspect of uh, my creative process and plugging it into a character who's just like, she's such a badass. And she's like, you know, um, that was a really uh, incredible thing. And working with, you know, people like Tika and Megan DeLima um, to work on the sound and the voice and um, you know I didn't really sing professionally beforehand it was more of like a shower uh, <laughs> car late night after the club singer so um, so it was yeah it was a really awesome kind of like throwing myself into it um, and uh, yeah I'm just really proud of how it all turned out so yeah and that's something I think the film really benefits from like the kind of plausibility I mean it, it, like it's like you can feel that these characters you know like who they are to Together and like I mean the dynamics are feel, feel very authentic, um, which is great. I mean especially when you're dealing with musicians because you kind of like got so much about being in, in groups together, or bands together. There has to be some kind of chemistry, and it really felt like the, you know that, that these these characters got that. I mean was it? I mean what was I mean what was that process of sort of you know bringing together these actors who could also be kind of uh, you know kind of plausible, convincing musicians, which is which is no small thing. Yeah, it's actually kind of strange because the, fu the funny long story short of the film is we were 10 days away from shooting back in March 2020. Um, and of course, you know, the plague came in and, and put a wrench into that. But we had our table read. Um, mm -hmm. That was the last time they, everyone like, was in the same room as each other um, until the December of that year when we got to actually do like a, a, a rehearsal and then go to shoot. And it was it was just so great just how prepared every performer came ready to go and then the dynamic of the group just sort of just formulated so organically and so quickly it was something that was really special to see because it's something that I don't think um you know I, I know that many filmmakers try different things to try to create or to try to um synthesize that sort of dynamic but it was something that the performers just all yeah. found in themselves I think it's just attaching themselves to the music and then bringing that to the table and there was some kind of connection there. Is that something? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it was like so much, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, we talk about like COVID and the plague and all of that. And we had, a, because we had more time also to like sit with uh, these characters in our minds, at least too, when we all got back together, having had listened to the music for so long, um, it was just, yeah, it was pretty seen how we all uh, interacted. And I remember like the bar scene mm -hmm. or the, the restaurant, when we're all there we had so much fun that day just as a group because <laughs> we just genuinely enjoyed each other's company so all of those relationships really um happened so organically and naturally and cosmically too like yeah. that group of people was a really special group of people um to have together and you know and thomas and i right off the bat were just like you know we got each other so um it was really special yeah yeah you could see that i mean definitely i mean thinking about uh, you know how like the effective of, of you know COVID and lockdowns kind of has impacted all kinds of work in so many interest you know I'll say interesting ways. Not, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think that really shines through in this film because it really I mean you really I mean that's certainly something I think a lot of people have, have, have missed very badly. I mean whether they're performers or audience members, just to sort of see people creating together, just sort of that kind of interplay. Mm. And you can see how that kind of that you can I mean that that certainly kind of comes through in the film as you get these you know. Um, these you know actors together playing characters and i'm sure they've been eager very eager to sort of connect with each other creatively too mm -hmm. yeah and it was just like I, I feel like everyone just really came prepared came with the music inside of them um one of the first group scenes we shot was actually the apartment scene um where everyone came in and played um and you know we shot it in pieces so everyone like came it was like a little bit of like not an audition, but you know, everyone had to play their part and we kind of stacked and built it up till it was one group. And it was just one of those days that was a bit chaotic. Going in, you think it's gonna be super chaotic, but um everyone just came and just was just ready to go. And at that point, like when everyone comes like that, it's like now we can just play, you know. And it's great. I mean, that's it. Like, did you feel like I mean, I mean, you know. You know, sort of the, the gadage goes like how many times you have to make a film like in writing and directing and then editing i mean did you feel at the end of sort of shooting this that you had the pieces or was it was there a long time sort of trying to figure out because i mean again that sort of unconventional nature of the piece and kind of that kind of all that sort of flow and rhythm and 
and feel that really has to kind of, uh, you know, kind of come together for a piece like this? I mean, did you feel like you had had it or was it just a long, uh, an, another long process to kind of get to, to where you arrived? Actually, I think the quickest part, part of this in that respect, as far as story goes, was the edit. Um, funny enough, uh, me, you know, we, we were very deliberate and very, you know, um, very particular about how we shot the film and how we, we had the performances. And um, so we, we got to the edit, we worked with two editors, Sean uh, Rikus and Bon Ma. And um, when they gave the assembly, the original assembly of the film, um, they gave me the assembly, but they also decided to take upon themselves to actually break apart the film and reimagine it and sent me an assembly of their sort of alternate um, take on it. And normally uh, editors don't do that for a few, a few tries down down the line. Um, partly not to like scare directors, but uh, <laughs> just so everyone can kind of see the film and it's in, in its full version. But by doing that, it immediately sort of opened up the questions of like what's working, what actually gets us from one feeling to the other, and get, like living in that discomfort really, really, really early. Um, made it so much clearer as we went along. So the process actually became much more, much more smoother, much more quick, because it wasn't this ego involved of it needs to be this way. Yeah, it does. And that, that makes total sense to me too. And I think that's an interesting place for you to be just because, you know, I mean, I think you've, you've done amazing shorts, but to kind of be coming to a feature for the first time, and to feel like, I mean, certainly the film uh, feels confident. Like it feels like you got that sort of self insurance. I'm not sure if that maybe felt like you were the inside, <laughs> but it certainly. <laughs> but it certainly feels like you were kind of, and that's it. Like I think there's also a sense that you were kind of found a way to kind of, you know, kind of surrender to the process and not maybe be as controlling or sort of, you know, because that's that's certainly a danger for someone who's going to come into a feature for the first time is to kind of overthink it, maybe. Yeah, it's very much a, it's very much like the like as cliche it is a, a bit of a tightrope walk in which you know exactly where you need to go, um, but you sort of just have to take what comes with you as you go across. You just have to make the walk, and wherever the wind is going, you sort of have to flow with it. But like you know exactly where you need to end up. So everything that can happen in between that can happen, and that's true too. Actually, one thing I was thinking about about the film too is I was really hoping that it actually does, I mean. It, I mean, it, did it actually kind of, you know, maybe you will get people interested in jazz? I mean, it does actually sort of, I mean, yeah. it's such a big thing because it's sort of like as a music that, you know, it continues to survive and, and continues to sort of have this richness, but it kind of like ebbs and flows in terms of, you know, sort of a public visibility. So I'm just like, it. I think it's just exciting to sort of ha have a vision of this music and this kind of community to present to people to sort of go, this is, this is what, you know, this, again, it's like, this is, these are real live musicians doing this thing. And, and I think that, you know, as we get sort of further and further away from that kind of experience, I think it's uh, it's it's really exciting to have it, you know. So I guess I'm not sure if I'm asking you whether you want to make a you know you know like maybe maybe make a bid to sort of save jazz, but maybe maybe you did. Well, it's it's a little bit of a, a love letter to Toronto in in many ways. I mean, all the music was created by, um, as you mentioned before, Tika Simone, Casey McGarra, mm -hmm. Megan DeLima, Chester Hansen, Leland Whitty. Um, they're all Canadian Toronto-based musicians working in that field, and so. You know, for me, it was really about, I didn't want to make a sort of jazz standard film in which it was a throwback. I really wanted to make a film in where it sounded like what we're listening to today, what are musicians making today and, and what's that contemporary sound. And so um, I hope that we were able to like just capture what it is that these artists are doing at this moment in their lives and in their progression and, and celebrate that in some way. I'm so, again, I'm, I'm really happy you did. I got and I want, I'm really hoping that this is a, you know, first of any features, but I'd love to hear from from you and Emma. Like, what's 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 next? What you kind of, are, I mean, it's given like I mean, I think a, a film takes it definitely takes a, a long time to sort of put together. But uh, um, if you feel like you got some good momentum for the next, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What is next? Um, who knows? No, I uh, I wrapped another feature. I'm just continuing on my journey as an actor and uh, hoping for to work with like incredible people. I gotta say, Learn to Swim really set a standard for me. It was my debut feature role um, and debut lead role. And uh, it was such an amazing experience to work with such incredible artists. And um, so I just hope to keep doing that and uh, work, keep, uh, you know, 
um, threatening you to put me in all of your movies. Um, <laughs> I will find a way. On out. Uh, yeah. It's so yeah, I just more work in the future. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm always writing. I'm always trying to to develop the next thing. You know, in the interim, you know, I've I've had uh, the pleasure of of, of joining. Um, the people over at CBC and did an episode of Murdoch Mysteries. I'm sure there's some fans um, of that <laughs> series that uh, look out the music episode as well. Um, and I'm working on a, another doc series with Northwood um, around uh, Black athletics in Canada. And so uh, those are the two very immediate things. Uh, the other things are sort of just brewing in the background. Is there, do you think there's another, uh, uh, another couple of music movies you want to make? I mean, I would love to, I would, I, I would love to do, you know, I did music, the music films are very, very challenging, <laughs> especially the way yeah, <laughs> that I go about doing them. But um, I actually, I actually got a lot of pleasure out of it. Music's such a huge part of my life. When I create films, I create these long playlists that I send out and share with everybody all the time. So um, if I could, if I could be more in that space, I, I you know, I would definitely love it. Well, that's great. Cool. I hope I hope there are more, uh, and I, I look forward to hearing. I got to hear one of those playlists too, so we've got to share. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much to Tyrone and Emma for joining us, and and thanks so much for the film, and and good luck with the Canadian Spring Awards too coming up too. It's uh, really uh, great to see the film get the acknowledgement it's had already, and uh, we really hope uh, the audiences here at the KCFF uh, enjoy it too. So, so thanks again. Awesome! Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you.